Hi, welcome to the Bridge Hammock Battle. Today we're going to be going over three different hammocks. The Warbonnet Ridge Runner, and the Eureka Chrysalis, and the Jackson Rider Bear Mountain Bridge Hammock. We're going to test each of these hammocks in four different categories. We're going to test how they work with tarps, how easily they are to insulate, uh, how well they are as a hammock, and the perception, the overall view of the hammock. So we're going to jump right into it, and I hope you enjoy it. This is the Eureka Chrysalis Bridge Hammock. It's the heaviest hammock of the hammocks that we're gonna, bridge hammocks that we're going to be looking at today. It weighs four pounds, just over four pounds. So for a lot of people, they opt out this hammock just because of the weight. But I think it's one of the better choices of the three. So let's take a closer look and I'll show you in depth some details of why this, this is a good quality hammock. Now here's some of the features of this hammock that I like. Um, if you look, it's got a double layer so you can easily fit a pad underneath here. It also has a head and a foot spot so some people may think this is a disadvantage because you can only put your head on one end but uh, I really like it because the way that they designed it is so that your your head will be rested in the right way and your feet will be rested in the right way so you won't get sore knees, sore, uh, sore ankles that most people find they get in gathered in hammocks. Um, I have slept in this hammock a couple of times now and every time after I'm finished sleeping in it I don't have a sore back, sore shoulders, sore feet, sore ankles, nothing. Uh, it really is a great hammock because of that head and foot design. Now the widest part of this hammock is at the spreader bars and that's three feet wide. And once you get to the center of the hammock it gets to 28 inches wide. So that's good to keep in mind for the spreader bar le length when you're thinking about the type of tarp that you want to use because you don't want the edges of the spreader bars to con continuously be rubbing against the tarp. Now one thing that most people probably won't like about this hammock is that the spreader bars are attached in the hammock. So as you see here, they got it screwed right in. You can unscrew them and then screw them in when you get to your site or uh, try to substitute hiking poles in their place. But uh, that's definitely one of the drawbacks of this system. One of the things I really like about this setup is the storage space. There's a giant pouch here and on the opposite end of the feet end there's also a giant pouch. Now you can put anything you want here and it doesn't interfere with how you're sleeping. I had both of those pouches filled up last time I was using it and uh, I still was comfortable. Nothing was rolling down on my face, nothing was rolling down into my feet. It was really good storage area. Now, one important thing that this hammock doesn't have that the other two have is an integrated bug net. So if you wanted to use a bug net with this system, then you would have to purchase a tropical bug net, a tropical sleeve they call it, and that's basically a bug net that goes over the whole thing and then you would have to put a separate tarp or you could purchase the camping camper sleeve and that is a, a attached tarp with a bug net attached to it. That uh, will keep the bugs out and you don't have to worry about it, but there isn't one that's integrated with this system. Now we're gonna try some sleeping positions. If you lie just flat on your back, it's an extremely comfortable hammock. If you like to put your arms up on your chest, it's pretty good. If you like to, ha if you try to get your arms kind of out to the sides, you can see my, now they're starting to rest on the seams of the hammock and there's a huge pressure point there. So this would be very uncomfortable. If you're a side sleeper, you can get kind of half of a fetal position. But once you try to bring your legs up to the full fetal position, it goes on the edge and outside of the hammock. So this pressure will be very uncomfortable after a little while and your legs are sitting outside the hammock so I guess you can get bit by bugs on the, if they're resting against the bug screen. Let's try the jackhammer position. Again, it's comfortable up to where my leg is because it's sitting outside the hammock and resting on this ridge. So that's gonna that's a pressure point right now, so it will cause some pain probably throughout the night. Now let's try lying on your stomach.
You could definitely lie on your stomach, but um, my arms over my head, I can feel a little pressure in my back. But when my arms are up by my chest, I, that pressure's gone and I, could, I feel kind of relaxed. When I was sleeping in it myself, I mainly lied on my back. I often went on my side and um, I didn't. I went on my stomach a little bit, but not much. I'm kind of a restless sleeper though, so I kind of, it doesn't matter where I'm sleeping, I'm rotating all night. Now I'm gonna show you the view from inside the hammock. So when you're in the hammock, you can basically see everything around you. There is no problem uh, with having the hammock coming up on the sides and not being able to look around at what's happening around you. You have a full 360 view. So I really like this aspect of the hammock because there's nothing like waking up in the morning and being able to look around and see what's going on around you. Now I'm going to show you how easy it is to insulate this hammock with an uh, underquill from Enlightened Equipment and a Eureka sleeping bag. So I'll just quickly attach this underquill. Tighten it up a little bit. And there you go. You have a nice warm underquilt for you. And since this is a double layer hammock, you can also insert your sleeping pad under the double layer, or second layer. And since you can access both sides of the for the the sleeping pad from both sides, it's really easy to throw it under there. And there you go, this insulated, you'll be warm throughout the night, you put a nice top quilt on there, and you're good to go. So like I said, this hammock doesn't come with um, any bug netting, but you can purchase the tropical sleeve, and it will give you a bug net that will cover the entire hammock from end to end, and double sided entrance. So that's a good idea if you wanted to put a tarp over top of the Eureka Chrysalis that isn't the tarp that you can purchase separately. Uh, the Eureka Chrysalis Camper Sleep comes with the tarp and a bug net. So it will give you the bug net you need underneath and a tarp over top so you don't have to purchase another tarp and a bug with the bug net here. So we're going to go over this tarp. The Jacks are Better 10x11 tarp. The DD 3 meter tarp. Here's a look at the Eureka Chrysalis Camper Sleeve. Um, the things that are nice about this is that it has a little ventilation uh, pocket window at the top that air can get in and out of throughout the night. So if when you're breathing, kind of the steam from your breath and the heat from your body can, can come out through these vents. Another great thing is that once you zip it up, 
it seals itself here with some velcro straps and uh, that will prevent the sleeve from sliding off. It has a double sided entrance from both sides. And I'll show you from the inside some benefits of this tarp uh, bug net system. So once you get on the inside you can see that uh, the whole setup is held taut by this line here. And there's the window I was explaining to you. Now, the thing I like about this for a bridge hammocks is it has reinforced corners. Now, these corners are held in the same spot by a Velcro patch on the side. So, this tarp system was specifically designed to hold a bridge style hammock. And once you're inside the setup with this uh, tarp, you see you have lots of space. There's flaps that are on the side here that you can put down for when it's raining but when it's not you can lift it up and you see you have your full view like I was discussing before. So overall this is a good tarp setup for this hammock. Now one thing to keep in mind with this hammock is it uses this webbing suspension. Now the previous model to this had a buckle system that you would crank and then that's how you would tighten your suspension. Now this one you just tie yourself a knot and um, that's how you'll keep your hammock secure. Now this is better because it reduced a little bit of the weight that was on the previous model and made it overall to me a better purchase to get because nobody wants to lug around that giant buckle for tying down straps like the same you would use for a moving vehicle. So here's a look at the DD 3 meter by 3 meter tarp. Um, so we'll take it a little bit closer. Now, if you look in here, you'll notice that uh, the bars don't touch the sides of the hammock right now. Now, if you were to get into the hammock and to get in and when you move around, it will, it will touch the side, but it won't be rubbing against it. So, this tarp is an option. The only thing I didn't like is that uh, the lengthwise, it doesn't go all the way. I like it to go all the way to at least here. So if I get a downpour that's coming in this direction, it won't get the end of my hammock wet. So if it was a little bit longer, but the width seems to be good for this size of hammock. So the DD 3 meter by 3 meter tarp seems to work well for this setup. Okay, so here's the DD 11 by 10 tarp. Now, so you can see you got a little bit of space to play with here. And also keep in mind, the higher you tie the tarp up to start off with, the wider it gets the, the further down you go. So if you tie it up higher, you get more space. Now this one has plenty of room. You won't find that you're digging up against the side. Like, if you look here, you won't find that you're rubbing constantly in the one spot and eventually wearing it down to nothing. It will work fine. And another thing that's nice about this one is it comes out further. Um, the one that we were just looking at previous didn't come out as far, so you're more likely to get wet. Um, this is a good overall tarp for bridge hammocks. Now I'm going to do the tippiness test, see how far you can lean over without having to fall out. So, I'm just about over the edge right now and if I did a little roll I'd probably fall out, but pretty good. Doesn't seem to be very tippy, I'll sit up, move around. Uh, climb up around in it. No, nope. I don't think I'm gonna fall out anytime soon. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, uh, it's pretty stable, and you you won't end up falling out unless you completely roll yourself out. But uh, yeah, tippiness test, I'd say, has got to pass. Finally, we're gonna see what this uh, hammock is like for a chair.
Now, it's not bad. There is a, a tremendous amount of pressure on this uh, seam here on my legs. I've never really been a fan of a bridge hammock as a chair. I pretty much find it useless to use as a chair. Doesn't matter how I do it, I can't get comfortable. Well, that's it for the Eureka Chrysalis Hammock. Hope you enjoyed this first part of the Bridge Hammock Battle. And part two, we'll be looking at the Jacks Are Better Bear Mountain Bridge Hammock.